In this video, we'll be talking about reaction rates. A rate is a change in some property over time. A common example you should be familiar with is the speed of a vehicle, which we define as the distance the vehicle travels, divided by the time it takes for it to get to its destination. We can also talk about rates in the context of chemical reactions. Different reactions proceed at different rates. Some reactions proceed very quickly, such as this explosion, and others proceed much more slowly. Knowing a reaction rate can be important, especially if you want to know how much time it's going to take for a particular reaction to happen. We tend to measure the rate of a reaction in terms of how much reactant is being consumed or how much product is being produced in a given amount of time. And just like with the speed of a car, we can derive equations that will help us calculate rates of reaction. Sometimes we calculate rates in terms of how quickly the reactants are disappearing in a certain time period. And sometimes we calculate them in terms of how quickly the products are appearing in a certain time period. So how exactly do we measure a reaction rate? Well, we will often measure it based on a change in some observable physical property that changes as the reaction proceeds. Examples include color change, light absorption, this is what Beer's Law is helpful for, change in volume, change in pressure, or even change in a solution's conductivity. Now let's take a look at the mathematics of this a little more closely. Now let's consider a reaction in which we have a reactant A that's reacting to form a product B. If we plot the concentrations versus time, we'll get a graph like this one. Initially, only reactant A is present, and the concentration of B is zero because it hasn't been made yet. Over time, the concentration of A decreases as A reacts to form more product B. The concentration of B will increase, of course, as more B is formed. Just like we can derive a mathematical expression to describe the speed of a race car, we can derive a mathematical expression to describe the rate of a reaction. An equation that we call the rate expression lets us calculate the rate of a reaction in terms of a concentration. This particular equation lets us calculate this in terms of the concentration of a reactant. The delta here means change in, and the brackets indicate that we're talking about a molar concentration. That means moles per liter of the particular substance, in this case, A. T means time, so delta T means change in time or over a certain period of time. Because the reactant is disappearing, the final concentration of A minus the initial concentration of A is always going to give you a number less than one. However, by convention, we always express rates in terms of positive numbers. And this is why we need to put a minus sign in the rate equation for the reactant's expression. You can think of this minus as a correction factor to make sure the rate is positive. Another way we can translate this is to say that the minus tells us that we have a reactant that's disappearing. If we're calculating the reaction rate for the products, the final concentration is larger than the initial concentration. So when we plug our numbers in, we're going to get a number greater than 1. We don't need to put a minus sign in here, since the rate we calculate is already going to be positive, because the concentration is getting larger over time. So just to summarize, rate expressions for reactants are given a negative sign, and this is because the reactant is being used up or decreasing. However, realize that rates are positive. Rate expressions for products are positive, and this is because they are increasing. Confused? Just remember, 
Do what you need to do to make the rate positive. So here's an example of how we can use these equations. The concentration of hydrogen peroxide in aqueous solution changes slowly over time as it decomposes according to this equation. We can express the rate of hydrogen peroxide decomposition, in other words, the rate of its breakdown and disappearance. The H2O2 in brackets means concentration of hydrogen peroxide, and T1 represents the starting time, and T2 represents a later time. We can rewrite our expression like this. Note that we have a negative sign in the expression. Because hydrogen peroxide is breaking down, the final concentration is smaller than the initial concentration. Since rates are always positive, we need to correct for this by putting a minus sign in the expression. If we want to calculate the rate of formation of water or oxygen, we don't have to include a negative sign in the rate equation because the final concentrations are larger than the initial concentrations. So our rate of appearance of water is the change in the concentration of water divided by the time interval, and the rate of appearance of oxygen is the change in the concentration of oxygen over the same time interval. The units for reaction rate are moles per liter per unit time, and that's because concentration is in moles per liter, and we are dividing this by time. We could also say molar per unit time, or molar times time to the negative one, where molar equals moles per liter. Often our time is in seconds, so sometimes we'll use the term molar per second, and this is the same as moles per liter per second. So get used to seeing units in all these different forms, but make sure you pay attention to the problem. You're gonna run into some problems that use minutes or hours instead of seconds. Make sure to use the time unit that the question asks for. Let's look at the following example. The concentration of hydrogen peroxide was measured every six hours over the course of a day at a constant temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. The initial concentration was 1.000 moles per liter. After six hours, the concentration had decreased to 0.500 moles per liter. What's the average rate of reaction during the six hour time interval? Well, we make our rate equation and notice that we have a minus sign and this is because hydrogen peroxide is disappearing. When we substitute our numbers in, we get an answer of 0 0.0833 moles per liter per hour, or moles times liters to the negative one times hours to the negative one. And we use the unit hours because that's what we were given. Now, rather than using moles per liter in our calculations, we could have also used molar, which is the same thing. Here's another example. We have a table that shows data for the same reaction described in the previous example. The data was collected over an entire day, and the rate equation we used in the previous example was used to calculate the rate of decomposition during various different time intervals. Notice how the rate of decomposition decreases with each time interval. In this graph, we can also see that the rate of decomposition decreases over time, and this makes sense since over time, more and more of the reactant is being used up, and there's less reactant available to decompose. And this is a very typical pattern for the change in concentration of a reactant that's being used up in a chemical reaction. Now, there are a couple of different kinds of rates we need to think about. The rate equation that we've been looking at gives us an average rate of reaction over a specified time interval. Now, if we wanted to find the exact rate of reaction at a particular time, then we would need to take the slope of the line tangent to the curve at that point. We call this the instantaneous rate of reaction. Now, we can also use calculus to derive this, but we don't need to in AP Chemistry. 
In summary, the kinetics of a chemical reaction is defined as the rate at which an amount of reactant is converted to products per unit time.